Hi everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op, and today we're going to tackle plant deficiencies in this Plant 101 course to get you up to par, up to speed, and hopefully teach you some things you didn't know, and hopefully solve some problems for you. But a lot of people run into deficiencies in their plants, and they have no idea it's going on until either the plant starts dying or something like that, and you know, a lot of times I'm talking to people that go, I don't know, just one day it just wasn't alive anymore, and really... There would be signs for usually weeks ahead of time going, oh, this plant's not doing so well. And it's just until you know what to look for, you don't see the problem. Basically, if it's not dead, in your mind it's alive, but we can still see illness. So when it comes to plant deficiencies, uh, I'm going to put up this chart kind of right now. And this chart is a super basic uh, illustration of maybe some of the... The deficiencies and we're going to talk about some of them and what to look for and things like that but the first one I think is the most common and that's a nitrogen deficiency and what that is is nitrogen is the same as nitrates in the water and what I find is a lot of people who are new to a planted aquarium they're trying really hard and when you try really hard they also tend to do like, let's say, weekly water changes and things like that. So they're actually cleaning their aquarium so much that there's not enough uh, nutrients in the water to actually grow the plants, even though they're putting fertilizer in and things like that. Uh, but nitrogen, a lot of times, is the first deficiency people run into. And how you're going to know that this is happening is typically the leaves are going to start turning yellow or maybe translucent, so maybe they're like a little bit see-through. And basically, if you had a leaf, it might look like the tip is starting to get consumed by something. It's just wasting away slowly. And what's happening there is the plant is consuming that leaf, an older leaf, to continue to make new leaves because the plant, all it can do is move forward. And if it's not moving forward, it's just straight up dying. So it's trying to make new leaves, and it's the plant's logic is this. I make new leaves, and eventually there'll be enough nutrients in the water that I won't have to consume an old leaf to make a leaf. Consume, make, consume, make. Eventually, there should be enough waste in the water, so it's just make, 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 and the plant keeps getting bigger and replicating. But in our aquarium, since we're in charge of it, the only ways we can really get nitrogen to a plant are going to be with a fertilizer or with, let's say, fish food, where we feed the fish, they go to the bathroom, it gets converted into some nitrogen or ammonia, either one, the plant will uptake that. But, uh, you know, so yellowing or translucent leaves is the sign. Now, how do we remedy it? So part of where people go wrong is like, let's say you're using a fertilizer and I'll, you know, obviously it's my channel, so I'll use my brand, but you could be using Seachem or anything else. It, it, you know, they're all liquid fertilizers. But let's say you start out your aquarium and it's been going well for three months and you're following the directions of one squirt of liquid per 10 gallons of water, and then in month four you're going, oh man, I'm, some of the leaves are turning yellow, some of the plants are dying back a little bit. What we're not accounting for here is that in three months, all those plants should have grown some. And so if you had a plant at month one that was this tall, and month two it was this tall, and month three it's this tall, and all of your plants have done that in the aquarium, uh, but we're still only putting one pump of fertilizer in uh, per 10 gallons per week. We now have three times the amount of plants we did when it was brand new, and yet the same amount of food. And so it's really easy for people to know, oh, I've got a t way more fish, I should feed more food. But with plants, a lot of times we don't, you know, it doesn't dawn on us going, oh, it needs more food. And so you can also run into a problem, like let's say your plants are all tall again, and you get in there and you trim them down because they're just doing your maintenance, right? You want to change the way it looks. You should also change the amount of food you feed. It might be less now. Um, so that nitrogen deficiency, I find that it's one of the most common things people are running into. Um, and so the best way to do that is um, trying to match what you think the growth of the plant is to the amount of fertilizer. And this is where being in tune with your tank lets you see that. So when you just start seeing some plants starting to yellow a little bit, it's most likely a nitrogen deficiency, and we can correct that with some fertilizer. Also, if it's a heavy root feeding plant, in which if you don't know the difference between root feeding and water column feeding and stuff like that, check out the tutorial 
on uh, plants that you know is out there. It's either out there now or it will be coming out very soon. Uh, also, so for a heavy root feeding plant, it can, relies on either an enriched substrate or root tabs or a combination of both. And when it exhausts these, it's going to exhibit the same types of um, symptoms. Now, there's one other instance when you might see leaves turning translucent and yellow. And that is when a plant is brand new to you, sometimes it'll melt back. If the plant was grown at an aquatic farm, which almost all plants that you're going to interact with probably have been grown there, they've been grown out of water. And so their leaves are different. They're used to being in the air, not underwater. And when you put them underwater, those big leaves uh, are going to die back and new different leaves are going to come out of that plant. And on a stem plant, what happens, let's say you've got a plant this tall. All the leaves here were grown out of water and all the new leaves will look different up here. And so all these leaves are going to die off. It's going to be this blank stem and then you'll have all this growth. So you'll have to trim it and replant it and then you'll have all submerged growth. But that's another reason you might be getting yellowing leaves or translucent leaves and like Amazon swords and things like that are notorious for it. Lots of stem plants, um, typically uh, hardier plants like Anubius and Java Fern don't have that problem as much. So that's the most common one. Uh, another one that people might run into is an iron deficiency. And you also get yellowing leaves, but all the veins of the leaves will be a dark color. So it's almost like you can see the skeleton of the plant. So, you know, if this is the leaf and it's around here, you would see this part and maybe the, the veins coming out and that's a darker color. But the, the plant in general is a lighter color, like a lighter green, like a lime green, or maybe a little bit yellow. It's a sign that the plants are starved for iron. And so adding some additional iron helps. Now, iron's one of the harder ones to get into fertilizers. So like my fertilizer, it has iron in it, but not in very high levels. So typically you're gonna to wanna to use a dedicated iron supplement, whether it's Seachem's or my brand or whatever it is, but if you need additional iron, you're gonna add that uh, with its own chemical there. So, you know, subtle difference, but kind of look at the chart and, you know, try and realize is the plant actually dissolving or is it just a, the wrong color and the veins are dark? Uh, the next one we're gonna talk about is a potassium deficiency. I find this one fairly easy to diagnose because your plants start getting pinholes in them. And so it's, you know, you've got a round leaf and it might have two or three holes in it and they're very tiny holes and sometimes they'll get a little bit of brown or yellow around the hole because it's damaged and basically it's just dying from a lack of potassium. Now there's other plants that really love potassium like Java Fern and Anubia, so more potassium just helps them anyway. Um, but any good fertilizer should have some potassium in it. Uh, we fortify ours with actually extra potassium um, because we find it really helps plant growth. But, um, you know, if you're finding you have all those pinholes and it's not a fish doing the damage, it's most likely your potassium deficiency and beefing that up a little bit will help. Now the next one is, uh, you know, the leaves are getting yellow and it's a phosphate deficiency, but you're also going to get brown patches. So like you've got this leaf and instead of having maybe a couple of pinholes, all of a sudden it's like, ooh, there's like a big chunk in the middle of that leaf that's just brown and soggy. And that means you don't have enough phosphate. Now that's not a super common one because a lot of people feed flake foods and things like that. And those are very high in phosphates typically. But you know, let's say you thought it was a potassium deficiency and you're adding more potassium and that's not fixing it. It might be the phosphate deficiency. And so sometimes people might run like a phosphate pad in their filter because they hear that phosphate makes algae uh, and they're starving all their plants of phosphate. And you might then see that phosphate deficiency. Uh, but, you know, that's how you would solve that. And you can always, you know, Reflect on a guide. Go back to a guide and go, okay, what is my plant doing? Okay, what do I think it is? And make those adjustments accordingly. Now, when you have dark veins and light colored leaves, and so not so much yellow, but just lighter green and dark veins, a lot of times that can be like a magnesium uh, issue. And Epsom salt's a great source of magnesium. There should be magnesium in your fertilizers. 
And this kind of goes right along with twisted leaves. So any leaves that are coming out and all are gnarled and twisted and don't look right, typically that's kind of a hard no, hard no, uh, a hardness or calcium issue. Uh, also manganese um, and magnesium and calcium, all those kind of go into hardness and that's where those come from. So if you have very soft water, like let's say you're using an RO unit, so you're, you have discus and you have plants, and you're starting to get some of those deficiencies, adding some minerals back into the water can help. Now, we've talked about these different deficiencies, and the way to fix most of them is all the same. A lot of times, if you're missing nitrogen, you might also be missing uh, other things. And so, with a fertilizer, if you just start dosing heavier, like, for instance, let's say you're missing nitrogen, and we dose just nitrogen. What's likely to happen or could happen is now we're not lacking nitrogen, but we're just gonna find the next thing that was the lowest. So, oh, now we're out of potassium. So something like my Easy Green, you just need to be dosing more fertilizer altogether because they're kind of evenly killed to go uh, with one another. So it's like, okay, here's two parts nitrogen, one part phosphate, one part potassium, and that's you know roughly what the plants are gonna consume in most scenarios where if we just come in and go, well, here's just three parts per million more nitrogen, we might solve the nitrogen problem, but we also might just go, oh, well, now we're limited by this or limited by that. And the same thing can happen with root tabs. And I think it's overall identify what the deficiency is and then analyze how we're going to fix it and then make sure that your fertilizer you are using has what you want it to do. Like, for instance this fertilizer would not be very high in hardness minerals. Most of the country has a lot of minerals in their tap water that will uh, help with that anyway. And so, you know, you got to analyze it from a, let's figure out what I think is wrong. And then it's going to take you two to three weeks before you're even going to see, did the changes I make, did they help it or hurt it? Did they just change the problem I have now? Things like that. Um, but for the most part, a lot of these, um, you know, like let's say iron, where the leaves looking a little bit green, like yellower and lime green than normal, a lot of people won't even notice that in their aquarium. It's the where the leaves are dissolving and the plant's actually dying from either a, a potassium, um, a phosphate, or a nitrogen deficiency. And those are all, you know, NPK are all the big nutrients, and every fertilizer should be pretty heavy in those. Now, some aren't that heavy in them because they're afraid to use them in high quantities, but you need to tune your schedule of nutrients to what your plants are actually consuming. And there's two ways you could solve these deficiencies. You could, let's say you're lacking nitrogen. You could add more nitrogen, or you could take some plants out. You could also feed more fish food but you might run out of some other things. So you gotta look at it, and it's an ever-evolving landscape. Just because you put more nitrogen today doesn't mean tomorrow you need it because you trim your plants, stuff like that. So I hope this is a basic guide to your deficiencies that'll help you get through most things. Uh, so make sure you check out the rest of the series. These are all building blocks to a successful planet tank. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.